Well, I finally found a few minutes to make another video, uh, this time on the topic of the CNC techniques that I've developed for the manufacture of 1911 pistol grips. Basically, the process of taking a set of blanks like these and turning them into a set of finished pistol grips like this. Uh, I've been wanting to make this particular video for quite a while now, and for several reasons. Um, first, I believe that knowledge should be shared, and being that I've pulled countless useful lessons from the internet, I think it's only fair that I should give back where I can. Um, in fact, looking back about 10 years, if it wasn't for another grip maker posting a step-by-step -step guide on how to make 1911 grips by hand, uh, I never would have started this hobby. Um, second, and, and this reason is a bit selfish, I built my CNC and learned to run it in a vacuum. Um, that is to say that I don't have any professional instruction. My method is just what I came up with. Uh, and everyone knows that if you give the same blueprints to 10 different machinists, you'll probably wind up with 10 more or less identical parts that were built using 10 completely different methods. Um, so I'm hoping that someone with a lot more CNC experience than I have uh, will be able to look at this video and then suggest some improvements to my current process, you know, um, learning all around, right? So here's a quick overview of my setup. Um, this is my man cave. Uh, unlike the typical man cave, there's, there's no recliner, there's no sports memorabilia, but uh, this is where I like to spend my free time. Um, I know the repurposed shower curtains behind me kind of give the impression of illicit activity, but I'm, I'm completely legitimate down here. They're, the curtains are just for, uh, for dust containment. And my CNC itself is homemade off of plan from chronosrobotics.com. I had a blast building it and it's, it's even more fun to operate. Um, my CAD, CAM, and controller software are uh, SketchUp, CAMBAM, and Mach 3 respectively. Uh, I feel that all three of these programs are effective. I have very wide knowledge bases and reasonable licensing fees. And the blueprints themselves that I work off of, I'm not a big fan of reverse engineering, um, were published by Rio Benson of Benson Consulting. They're a, they're a fantastic resource and I thank Rio very much for making them available. And uh, probably blueprints are the best, uh, best place to take this video now. I'll spend a couple seconds talking about the uh, actual drawings here. I'm going to stick to the specified geometry as much as possible, but there will be a couple departures. First, these drawings call out recesses on the back of the grip panel. But note 1 here says that the uh, recesses are non-functional, so I'm not going to bother with them. Second, the drawing calls out the material should be plastic. I'm obviously going to be using wood. Third, note 3 calls out some checkering here. And even though a lot of wooden grips are checkered, I'm just going to leave these smooth. Now the last thing, the last departure here, is going to be on the left grip panel right there. That's a cutout to accommodate the uh, plunger housing and it calls for a very small radius there, 0.095. I don't have an end mill with the radius that small so I'm just going to cut that with a square end mill. The grip will still be functional but not quite to print. Other than that we're going to manufacture these in accordance with the drawing. So the next step in my process is to reference my spindle to my fixture. And I'm going to do that by running a macro that homes all of my axes and then touches this 250 thousandths pin to this pad and this pad, which is going to tell the computer um, exactly where the spindle is in relation to uh, this jig. Uh, the next thing it's going to do is ask me to swap out the tools. Uh, it will touch the tool off the top of this pad and I'm start, ready to start cutting wood at that point. So. I'm going to power up my machine here and throw my first macro in. So I just referenced Z Home. Now we're going back on the Y axis. There's my X axis. Now we're going to send that pin down, and when it touches that pad, we're at negative 125 thousandths on the x-axis. We do the same on the y-axis right now. All right, there's the touch. Alright, now you can't see this, but there's a note to myself on my machine now that's telling me to uh, swap out the pin with an eighth inch end mill, 
uh, load my material, and then attach the dust collection skirt. Now, it's going to be a boring video if I have that dust collection skirt on, so I'm going to leave that off, but it's going to throw some extra dust around here. All right, load up my material. This is going to be my backside. Positioned right there. He's going out of the way. All right, normally I'd put my skirt on. I'm not going to bother that step right now. Turn my power onto my router. Okay. So now we're going to touch off that pad again. And I have my first bit of G-code loaded now. Let's see how that looks. I better zoom in a bit. Alright, so this first machining operation is going to cut these screw holes through both grips. All right, it's time for step two. What I'm going to do is flip my blanks over and then put these uh, aluminum pads underneath my clamps so that uh, my router will have something to reference for the countersink, which we have to, uh, to machine next. Uh, I was referencing the back surface of the grip, and now that that's facing skyward, I'm going to have to re-reference on both grips, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, step two. We're going to do the uh, backside countersinks as well as the cutout for the plunger spring housing. Uh, if I was going to be machining a set of grips that had an ambidextrous safety cutout, this is where I'd be doing that as well, but as that's not on the original print, we're going to leave that step off of this grips. There's the top grip, now it's going to ask me for uh, the code for the bottom grip, which I'll throw in here. Alright, looks good to me, so I'll hit cycle start.
All right, so now I'm set up for the next step. I need to run some uh, some code here to reference off of that pad again. Then it's going to pull my bit out of the way, so I'll be able to take my stock and move it over to the right-hand side of the jig for the rest of the finishing. So this is what we have so far. This is the uh, left hand grip. We have all the geometry for the screw holes cut now, we'll clean up a little bit with some sandpaper. And then we have the uh, cutout for the plunger tube ball machine in there as well. This next step isn't too terribly exciting. All I'm going to do is move my stock from the left side of my jig to these pads here on the right. On the next machining operation. This is where we're going to take this uh, square block of wood and actually give it the profile shape of a 1911 grip. This is my favorite step because at this point it's, uh, it's starting to look like our finished product. So stand by, I'll show you how that's done. Let's go back to our drawing for a couple of seconds and talk about the next machining operation, which is going to be placing this uh, this curve on the top side of the grip. Now the drawing calls out a radius of 1.03 inches, 
and I thought I was going to accomplish this next machining operation using a bit similar to this one. That's a roundover bit. Uh, I decided against this for a couple of reasons. Um, the first is that that's going to be a very large bit and therefore expensive and I'm quite cheap. Uh, also 1.03 inches is kind of odd geometry and I'd have a hard time finding a bit in that size. So I had to come up with a different technique. What works a little better for me is to use my cam software to generate a 3D profile operation using a bit similar to this one, actually this exact bit, um, to make progressively deeper passes over my stock until I get pretty close to the shape that I want. Now that's going to leave little ridges but that's okay because I can just run this over the belt sander when I'm done in a matter of a couple seconds to knock those right off until I get something like this. So let's set that up and I'll show you how that's accomplished. Alright, I'm going to kill the power to my motor. It probably wouldn't turn on on its own, but why take that chance? Alright, turn the power back on. Alright, so there's a note to myself on screen here to uh, put my dust boot back on. I'll show you what that would look like. But that's going to make for some pretty boring viewing, so I'll leave that off. It's going to make a mess of the shop, but it needs a good cleaning anyway.
Okay, on to the next detail, and that is this little bevel down here at the bottom of the grip. Now looking back at the plans, we see we've got uh, it's like 45 degrees plus or minus 5 degrees with, uh, I think this is elsewhere on the drawing, 50 thousandths left on that flat edge there. And I'm simply going to do this by chucking this V-cutter in and going to town. So let's do that. So just like before, kill the power, get my wrenches out, that these two bits have the uh, same size shake so I don't have to swap collets out between these two machining operations which is nice nice and tight turn the power back on macro. Alright, so there's another note on the screen. Uh, put the dust boot on, which I'm not going to do. And let me line you up for a better view here. Now the program is waiting for my permission to start, and everything looks good to me, so I'll grant permission with my Xbox controller. back at the drawing. This time we're going to discuss this uh, detail here and that's this radius along the top edge of the grip. Uh, 500 thousandths radius which means I can use quite conveniently this half inch round over bit to, uh, to make that cut and all I have to do is get it to follow this arc right here which isn't too terribly difficult to do with a CNC machine. However, if you're making these by hand, it is a little tricky, and that's why I think this detail gets left off quite a few uh, aftermarket grips that you see for sale on uh, eBay and Etsy these days. Alright, well, uh, back to the CNC, I guess. I spared you the boredom of watching me change bits again. Uh, we're ready to go now, so what I'm going to do is drop my Z-axis down until my bit is almost touching my pad here. Put on the dust collection skirt. I'm not going to do that. Let's see if I can get you a better view here. All right, looks like we're ready to go.
it uh, looks like I got just a little bit of tear out there. That's a shame. I think I can fix that on the sander. But other than that, all the machine is done uh, as far as the CNC is concerned anyway. Let's pop these off and touch them up on the sander. All right, we are ready to sand. Let me turn on my shop back here. Well, that's pretty much it. Um, with a little bit of hand sanding, these will be ready to accept a finish. Uh, but that, to me, was the fun part. I really enjoy running the machine and, and dimensioning the, the wood. Uh, applying the finish, to me, is, is tedious and boring, but, of course, very few people are going to want to buy an unfinished grip, so that, that's a necessary part of the process. Um, I should also add that I do use the CNC router to inlay objects like, like uh, rank insignia or, or badges or whatever, um, or also engrave some, some custom text. And uh, maybe I'll throw a few photos at the end of this video to show you what I'm talking about for that. But this is my hobby, it's what I like to do, and, and I would like to say that I made this video to. Um, I, I made this video to generate discussion. So. Please feel free to uh, send me a message or, or, or post on this video. Um, you know, the internet's a big community. I, I hope somebody learned something from me. And if you're uh, much better at this than I am, uh, definitely send me your recommendations on what I could be doing better. Thank you very much for watching.